And the Bible tells us very clearly, if we look in the book of John, in the uh, 13th chapter, listen to what it says. And a new commandment I give you, love one another. We always think about love on Valentine's Day for some reason. And many times throughout the rest of the year, it's just a word that we use. And we use the word for pretty much everything. We use the word love for telling somebody how much we adore or appreciate them. But we also say, I love to squeeze the charm, the toilet dish. So the word love is just abused everywhere. But it's something that the Bible tells us that that's the first thing that he said, a new commandment I give you, that you love one another. We shouldn't just love on Valentine's Day. As a Christian, we should love every day. And we should have those attributes in our life that make us lovely, that when other people see us, that they will know that we're one of his children. By the way, this little box does have candy inside. I think it's all falling out, but anyway, it does have candy in it. So typically that's what we think about, you know, when we see a box like this. So let me encourage you, let's not judge people so much by how they look, because we can't see the inside. And because people can't see our inside, let us be more loving and more lovely so people will want to get to know who we are. Let's have our prayer service. God, we give you thanks for the promises in your word and the commands to love each other. And it goes for the Father to say that we should love each other as you have loved us. And we know how much you love us if you're willing to lay down your life so that we can be saved. Father, we just pray that you would help us not only on Valentine's Day, but every day to be filled with your love. That we would be those people that are lovely, that others would want to be a part of our company. Thank you for our time together, for we ask you in your name. Show. Sure.
I don't know what in the world that you did wrong to deserve me, but anyway, you got me. <laughs> Habakkuk 2. Write the vision and make it plain on tablets that he may run who reads it. These things I plan won't happen right away. God's speaking into his creation, and he, I'm saying that he is pouring out his spirit on all flesh. You are going to experience things like I personally believe has not been demonstrated ever before. Think about this. When I was a kid, I had to wait till I was six years old to go to what they called Vespers at Bob Jones University. It was, we had no TV. It was the most closest thing I came to having entertainment of that sort. And I remember going in there and we'd sit and uh, we would be real people talking and all of a sudden the lights would start going down and everybody would be hush, 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 hush. And the lights would get almost totally dark and then the curtains would open up and then they would have some kind of drama or music or preaching sometimes. But I believe God has waited to demonstrate, dramatically show the world. It says that I will fill the earth with the knowledge and the glory of God. How many of you know there's a parts of this old world that doesn't have the knowledge and the glory of God? Did any of you have an argument this morning? Honey, that's not the glory and that's not the knowledge of God. <laughs> but God is going to demonstrate this and I... I it's coming. He says, these things I plan won't happen right away, but slowly, steadily, surely the time approaches when the vision will be fulfilled. If it seems slow, that's the danger. You're waiting and waiting, and all of a sudden you give up waiting. You lose the dream. You stop. Don't despair, for these things will surely come to pass just be patient. They will not be overdue a single day. And in review, we've gone through this, and I've, I thought this would be two or three sermons, and here we are about 10 or 11 down the road. We talked about young Jesus in the carpenter shop there around Christmas. Here is the creator. In the beginning was the word. Who's the word? Jesus. And the word was with God, and the word was God, and in, in John 1, 14, and the word became flesh. Who's that? And we beheld him. And here is Jesus in the carpenter shop. Some of you in the shop, in the kitchen, out on the road driving. And there you are. And you're going, oh. Hello, how many of you know that's the truth? We talked about young Jesus in the shop. We talked about God in eternity. Now, there ain't, there's no way in the world I can communicate or even understand it. It helps to communicate something if I understand it, but eternity. I mean, you think about a long time, it's a lot longer than that. Here's God in eternity, and he's planning and getting all this ready. We shared about vision. You remember the ten virgins? All of a sudden they're, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, the midnight cry. And they're, oh, oh, not ready. I mean, I mean, you know, I was talking to Renee. The big issue about the difference between work and having fun is the amount of time that you have to do it. For instance, if you're under a deadline, there is no way to have fun doing that. When, how many of you, as you get older, what's the use of getting up there in the last minute and rush around? I always thought, what in the world? My mom, she would, every time we go somewhere, we get to go to Vespers. We get there 30 minutes early. Just sit there and enjoy the organ music. God wants you in this area of waiting. If you understand a little bit about it, it's not as torturous. And that's really what I want to share with you is how to wait. So it doesn't drive you nuts and that you don't drive others nuts. Hello? <laughs> the golden calf. We talked about a special word in the Hebrew. Had to deal with comfort and repent. And today we're sharing about Joseph. I didn't mean to leave that on there. The iron entered into his soul. Psalms 105, verse 17. He sent a man before them, Joseph. 
I looked up this word, Joseph, and one of the guys that teach it says it's, it's one of the most common names in Egypt, Go, jo Joseph. Interesting, huh? Guess what famous rock star's middle name was Joseph? Does someone know? I couldn't believe this when I saw this. Michael Joseph Jackson. <laughs> what that got to do with this, I'm not sure. But anyway, <laughs> I thought you could hang your hat on that. He sent a man before them, Joseph, who was sold as a slave. They hurt his feet with fetters. He was laid in irons until the time that his word came to pass. The word of the Lord tested him. Now, I want to give you a little overview just to refresh your memory. You've heard this. It was one of the most common. How many of you, when you were kids, had this flannel, uh, flannel graph? They had this board with a kind of a felt on it, and they would put little figures. They had Joseph, and what did Joseph get from his father? The coat of many colors. <laughs> well, Miss Shirley, you got a coat of many colors. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Well, we remember this story, and it's really one of the most dramatic sequence of events. If, and for instance, several times I heard, I listened to different sermons on this this week, that if there's any story 